back. Joining us is Tony Clark with the Defenders for Children organization. Thank you for joining us today, Tony. Good morning, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Now, Tony, what exactly is the Defenders for Children organization? Defenders for Children organization launched in Greenville uh, over 10 years ago. We just had a 10 year anniversary, which we're excited about. And we are a child abuse awareness and education organization to um, coming up with projects to get the uh, public to uh, participate and help on the rising child abuse, trafficking, child pornography issues that we have. So it's all about the public helping versus us just talking about it. It's like, what can we do about it? Um, so that's pretty much what we do. We have multiple programs out there and we're just trying to wake up the community and the public overall, the nation, um, that the only way to change our rising numbers is to step up and help. Now, how exactly do your electron detection canines work? That's our Operation 180 turnaround program. And what's exciting about that, um, they are beautiful black labs that are gentle, uh, very therapeutic that will, that we ask the community to step up and help us donate to law enforcement to use as a, a necessary tool. Not, this is not something they, we should give them. This is something that every agency needs to help them on searches when they're going on searches for child abuse, child pornography, and trafficking. Um, they are, a, they have a special, uh, training where they're able to locate micro SD cards, thumb drives, um, hidden cameras, anything that you can think of that the criminal or um, a sex offender pornographer would hide their evidence uh, from law enforcement. Um, here's an example of one here. There's a tiny little thing like this. It's like size of my little thumb, my nail. Right. And if I ask anybody that's listening, where would you hide this in your house? If you looked around and said, where would I hide this? It'll be amazing how easy it is and how difficult it is for law enforcement to find it. Electronic detection canines, they're new and they have ability to find, they can smell a common chemical that's on all reading devices. And so if a perpetrator hides it in the ceiling, attic, under the carpet, wherever, the dogs are gonna find it. They're amazing. Um, and one thing to keep in mind why we need these is because the average uh, device can hold over, over 255,000 images of children being sexually abused, beaten, whatever, all these horrible things that we don't want to think about. This evidence is needed to stop the perpetrators and identify the victims and rescue them. And it works. I mean, the dogs are amazing. Now, you mentioned a second ago that people donate these uh, black labs. How do they go about donating them? Well, we just ask um, everybody who's listening and cares and wants to see something um, out there that's making a direct impact against child abuse um, is to just make a donation on our website of any, whatever they can afford from $5 to thousands. Um, the more we have, the more dogs we can donate. And that's what we got to look at because any search out there without one of our canines puts children at risk across our nation. I mean, it's just that solid. We have to get the dogs out. Um, every sheriff will tell you these dogs are amazing tool that they want to see everywhere. Even the FBI and Homeland Security uses them also. They'll call on our dogs. Um, so that we just ask them to make a donation. Um, each dog is an average of $23,000 is what we raise. And and that covers the actual dog. You have to find the canine, which the labs have become more expensive due to popularity. Um, so we have to buy uh, the canine. We have to pay for the canine to be trained. And then we have to train the, the police officer. And it'll take, from, it could be from three to six weeks of direct training out of state. Uh, so and then the dog will come back and then you have to look at other costs involved as well. I see. That sounds like some very thorough training. Uh, yes, we have the best in the United States doing the job, actually. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Now, Tony, as the pandemic begins to conclude, how was your organization impacted by COVID-19? <laughs> yeah, well, no money. <laughs> everybody right. shuts down. When everybody shuts down, we had to cancel all our fundraising events. I mean, you know, everybody just shut down and it hurt all charities. I mean, it's amazing. Um, we... We depend on donations. That's how we survive. We don't receive grant money from the state or federal money. So if the public is, is not able to donate, we hurt. 
Um, and we have a very low overhead. So all about 98% of all money donated will go directly into the canine program right now, which is huge, but we need the donations to keep moving forward. And speaking of events, can you give us an overview of your recent United We Stand event? That was recently at Stella's um, Southern Brazil, Brazier, I should say, um, over off of Verde. We had a wonderful event. And we had six weeks to pull that together. It was amazing because, you know, we're like, so how are we going to do this? It, we knew it was time to bring all five of our dogs together for the first time that was raised in a short period of time and to introduce them to those who care and wanted to meet them. And it was an amazing event. We expected about 100 people. We had over 200 that showed up. Um, the sheriff came out and spoke. All of our, all of our dogs were there. Um, it was amazing, and we raised about thirty-two thousand dollars in the six weeks worth of work. That was that was God's work. It was really neat. Thirty-two thousand dollars—that is most impressive. You could just tell the room was full of caring people, and that's what we need to build in our community: um, is more people that will come together for the sake of our children. Because if we don't come together, who will? You know, it's the public that needs to step up and demand to start protecting all of God's children. You know what I mean? And it's up to us to make that change in demand because it, um, it all starts with the child. If a child is raised in a, in a traumatic situation, no matter what it is from child abuse, domestic abuse, you know, pornography, trafficking, all that, they're going to have to struggle as an adult. And we're seeing the aftermath of this with the numbers. Indeed. Now, what are some additional events that we can look forward to? Uh, well, we're working on I'm trying to finalize the date in the fall for a golf tournament. So we're looking at having that and which the date, sadly, I don't have the date for you right now, but we will have an, a, a wonderful golf tournament shortly. And what we do ask people, you know, we usually don't throw events because it creates a lot of work for us. So a lot of times we like to have fun and ask other people to throw an event for us to raise funds for us. And we have a, on our website, you'll see a list called Operation 180 Turnaround Task Force. And that's a list of about 45 people so far um, that will raise their own money for us. They try to get raised a minimal of $1,000. And no matter how they could do it, one guy raffled a, a tattoo. And within three hours, he raised $1,000 just by raffling a tattoo. It was a tattoo really? artist. And it was amazing. And then somebody else will have a home party asking people. And so we're asking the public to do this because when you ask the charity to keep trying to raise funds, it takes a lot of their energy when we should be working on other areas. So anybody that wants to get their office to collectively donate, that's, all, that's wonderful. So if you we have realtors who will just go out there and ask people, their customers or clients to donate, and get their name on the list of people who care. Are there any additional volunteer or donation opportunities available to the public? Uh, definitely, you know, first things first is get on our website and share and, and follow us on social media. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Uh, just get started, you know, you know, email me, let me know what, where your gift is, how you want to help, uh, you know. Everybody has something they can do from writing, uh, art, some kind of graphic artist. We always need different people to help musicians we just had you know the last event most of the people that came together were all volunteers so our overhead to pay out was very low so people donate to help us with how far we've gotten you know um you know it's been a blessing and one thing i want to keep people to understand why these dogs are so important because you know if we don't stop the offender and those who are hurting the children we're going to lose because and you know, in 2010, when we first launched the organization, the um, Greenville was actually one of the highest rates of child sexual abuse in the whole state. So they were listed one of the top communities. Well, roll it forward 10 years, we're still at the top. So with all these beautiful charities out there working hard with victims, our stats are still high. So that means we've got to do something different. And that's where the dogs came in because Defenders for Children, all of us, we believe we need to stop, find ways to stop the abuse before it happens, go a little stronger with it. And that's going after those who are trying to hurt the children and do a better job to protect the children before they're abused. That's the key thing. The average perpetrator can have up to nine 
children that they can abuse. That's a lot. That is Some a lot. of them, a lot more. Law enforcement, it's amazing. They've gone out with our dogs and they'll find a device, one of those uh, micro SD card or a camera, and then they'll find out there's live victims that they would have not have known if the dog was not there to locate the device. So it's, it's amazing. Um, they're just totally amazing, the dogs. Um, to I me, agree. we need to get them out. We, we're, our goal is to have at least three to four more in the state. We currently have one in Greenville County, Spartanburg County, Anderson County, Columbia, and Charleston. So now we're looking at going after Florence, Myrtle Beach. Um, we want another one in Greenville. Uh, we have an agency that would like to have one. It's going to be very impacting. Um, and then a couple other floating dogs out there to help out. So, but that would only happen without the community stepping up and making it happen. And so we're going to be rolling into other adjacent states because the offenders, the perpetrators will travel across borders. They, they do. You know what I mean? So we need to get the dogs everywhere. Now, if anyone wanted to learn more about Defenders for Children, how would they contact you, Tony? Just um, just go on our website, defendersforchildren.org. And you can email me also at defendersforchildren at gmail.com. Um, I'll, I'll get most of, I'll receive most of the messages about the canine, about any message that you may have. Um, and to donate, everything's right there on the website. Um, if you want to send a check as well, the address, anything anybody can do, um, just do something. You know, these kids are hurting. When you have a thousand cases of children average every year in Greenville being hurt, we, we're doing something wrong by allowing this to happen. We got to stop it. And then with the growth happening in Greenville, the numbers are only going to go up if we do not create a zero tolerance. So this is one powerful tool. I would definitely encourage everybody to take it seriously. All right. Well, Tony, thank you for taking the time to speak with us here this morning. Thank you. And thank you for watching this morning. I'm Nelson Weston for Focus on the Palmetto State. If you have any questions or comments for the show, you can send them to the address you see on the screen there. Have a good week.